Three blind people from Belize go on a journey they will never forget. They learn to see with sound by tongue clicking using echolocation. In that tongue click, it illuminates the environment. It's flash sonar. It's like a flash on a camera. That tongue click travels into the environment, reflects off the objects, comes back to the ear, and the brain can learn to image the world. Our brain is recognizing these acoustic images like a bat. Brian Bushway from the World Access for the Blind came to Belize to teach three clients from the Belize Council for the Visually Impaired flash sonar or echolocation. Rowan Garrell wants to go to college on his own. Juan Reyna wants to become a DJ and develop computer games for the visually impaired. Donovan Reno is a DJ at a local radio station. He wants to stop bumping into signs on his way to work and get around the city better. Brian was a very active child and became blind at the age of 14. Although he learned to use a cane, he claimed he can see images in his mind. It was Daniel Keish, executive director of the World Access for the Blind and initiator of Human Flash Sonar, who told Brian he was passively echolocating. He taught Brian how to actively echolocate by tongue clicking. Later, Brian went to Daniel to practice the methods and joined the World Access for the Blind. Like Daniel, he received a degree in special education and then became a certified orientation and mobility specialist. They traveled to many countries teaching these methods. Brian became skilled at skateboarding, running races, and mountain biking, a real daredevil. Our eyes may not work, but the imaging capacity of our brain is still functional. And our teaching curriculum is designed to activate the imaging process of the brain. In Belize, the process begins in a large room. The students are accompanied by family and friends who come to understand this technique. Brian's excellent teaching skills quickly engages the students in a firm foundation of flash sonar, where they learn the sonic features they will find in the outside world. You want a nice sharp click? And the click is sort of created by putting some suction on the top of the mouth using the blade and just... And you want a single click. Oh, that's a good smile a little bit more. Don't listen to the click in your mouth. We want to be listening for the echoes out in the environment. The students start by bouncing clicks off flat and curved panels, bringing them closer and further away to experience the echo differences. Brian then places the panel either on the left or the right and they have to scan to find where it is at. This compares open spaces to closer objects. Well done! They need to develop their own vocabulary and Brian asks them to describe what they are hearing. It's like being by a closed door. Ah, uh, good association. So it's important, like being by a closed door. In this echo training, we start evidence that the brain is imaging acoustically is when students start making these connections. It sounds hollow and low. And then, it okay, sounds... and now when it's away, how does it sound? Very high and uh, unhollow. Unhollow, okay, yeah. Yeah, we have to search for new words, right? On their feet, they use this knowledge to first find a wall. Standing close to the wall, they click and then turn around to hear the open space. Listen to what the wall sounds like versus the open space behind you. I can hear it, so the echo is bouncing more, more farther. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when it turns, it goes far out. Having heard the difference, they move further away and image the wall better. It was really cool because I could tell that the wall was there and I could tell how big it was. The next challenge is to echolocate the interior corners to determine the size and shape of a room. To find intersections and doorways, the students look for exterior corners echoing where a wall ends and an open space begins. The students learn the sonic signature of a column. Yeah, it did. Sounds different, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Open space. Something in front yeah, of it. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I saw like a big square with another big square and a triangle. Rowan clicks and describes an interior corner. It's like I could see the corner in front of me and then to my right there's one wall and then to my left there's another wall it's like i could actually see that i'm not touching it but i know it's there and you could tell it's a corner there and like you vision it the students are doing very well so brian gives them a more difficult task who could walk 
close to the wall without touching it. You're walking, you're clicking, and you want to like stop like what you perceive to be an arm's length away. And you reach your arm up, and you're like, boom, arm's length away. Reach, I reach exact. See, I did exact. Okay, good. Yeah. Did your cane touch the wall first, or no? Oh, nice, good cane. I like how your cane is here. He did it. I think this is it. Okay, reach your hand out. Click, reach your hand out. Yeah, I know. Fine. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Mentally, it's it's tiring, and that's actually pretty neat because the brain is actually doing things it hasn't done before. But that's a good sign of uh, a good day of work. When we go outside, we're going to be hearing flat surfaces. We'll be hearing hollow <laughs> surfaces, and we'll also be hearing dull surfaces, muffled sounds. It sounds like when I'm half asleep and my face is on something. Does it sound more muffled? Yes, it does. Bushes, plants, yeah. trees are described as muffled sounding. It yeah. sounds muffled. It is muffled. Yeah, it is. So right here we have this thin, solid tree. We have the yeah. wall behind it. This is like a bush on top of a pole. Yeah. Next, Brian finds a wooden sculpture in the hotel foyer. He calls the students over. It is an ideal opportunity to echolocate this complex structure of flat and curved surfaces with open spaces. It looks kind of like a man. It looks like this big panel-like belly. It just went curved. It's almost like a half circle. If you step back a little bit, you may be able to hear some of those curves. Whoa! Know, yep. it's, like... <laughs> it's like, I could hear where it's flat and where it curves up, where it opens. Yes! The next venture is to cross a residential street using the road camber and echoes from structures on the opposite side. The clap as well as click to verify structures further away. It's getting more open, like there's a lane over there. It's more of a hollow sound to me. Let's yes. go. It's pretty steep here, so use your cane. There's the hollow sound again. As they cross the street, they search for a hollow sound. Look around, look around the whole area. There's a reason why we're able to hear it. They find an alcohol. Ah, oh, look at this. There's what do you think? It looks like it's a rectangle or a circle. You know what? Mm -hmm. You're right. It's an archway. It's an archway, right. Oh. So it is kind of like a rectangle, like you said. And then at the top... It gets more circular. It gets more circular. Mm -hmm. Importance was too that we were able to hear echoes from the other side of the street. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Things farther away. This is the first time we're hearing echoes at greater distances. Mm -hmm. A park is a great place for orientation skills. There are paths, trees, poles, and open spaces. The right is seems pretty open to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Compared to the left. Compared to the left, yeah. It, it, it tells us two information. Mm -hmm. There's a road over there to our right, right. right. in the distance. We have this echo in front of us. Right, a building there. A building. We clapped and we actually saw a house. It was really far. I mean, it, the echo took about a second to travel. Okay. Sighted people could just look around and see exactly where they are, but we have to be more creative because, you know, we have the clicks, we have the cane, and we have to sort of put the images together and figure out our own way. If sighted people were to wear a blindfold and go in our world for just one day, they would think that being a blind person is not all that bad. It's pretty interesting to finally find something that you, you might be good at. I think, it's so, I think it's solid. I think it's more full at the top. Yeah. That, would let me to, that would lead me to believe it's a tree. It's a tree. Okay, you're actually almost underneath it. That's so cool how we could hear it above us though. Yeah. yeah. They are now in a parking lot outside Benny's home center in Belize City. Asking yourself the question, where is the building? Juan, what should we do? Start scanning. Yep, start scanning. Perfect. I think it's over know. there. There it is. Okay. They walk towards the building, swiping their canes and listening for obstacles like cars or poles. Let's see if we go into the alcove. It's like we're going into that salad bowl. Notice as we get closer how it sounds different. So how was that finding the store entrance? It was easy. All you had to do was listen to the clap. Yeah. That's, this is actually the most practical use of echolocation. Where's the building? Inside, they use audio cues and echolocation to navigate through aisles and intersections. Juan, when you're walking, tell me when you hear it get op more open on the left. Walk and click. There's one. Mm -hmm. 
then keep walking straight and tell me when it you hear it get on your left again. Perfect. Rowan continues down the aisle while Donovan and Brian are on another adventure and find a familiar object. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> We found the machetes. Yeah. We found the machetes. So you guys heard the escalator? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. over to the Fall right. I could feel it when It's I forward and right. Cool. Yeah. Let's go find the escalator. Okay. Well, there's one that goes up and one that goes down. Right, yeah. And you can even feel it at the end how it goes down. Ooh. Ooh, it's like a little ride. It is a little ride. Going up. You could do this without the handrail too if you wanted. Just use your cane and your cane will find the different parts. I think we gotta work on Donovan's gracefulness. When I went on the escalator, I was like, how did this machine get me up here so fast? When I was echolocating, I could actually see the aisle right in front of me or that mattress that was there. All the students moved around turning corners, swiping and clicking. No one knocks over anything and they do really well. Where are we supposed to go now, sir? Okay, let's go down and find an aisle on our way out. Alright, Juan, you're the leader. Juan goes straight to the escalators while the others go astray. Okay, so we missed the, yeah. the turn. Here's the turn, yeah. Juan continues down the escalator with his mother. The others follow. Donovan still has a little problem but is doing better. Rowan goes down on his own. The students search for a landmark to find their way out. They find it. Oh, we're back at the cycles. After leaving the city, they visit Laughing Goose Farm. Here they receive an overwhelming tactile and audio experience. I told you these are the only animals I like to touch. I love this horse. I can brush this horse only. <laughs> <laughs> Just the egg juice. Oh, yeah, no, pickle, 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 pickle. Oh my goodness. This is different. Oh. I've never held. This is a day old baby chicken. Oh my god, it's a baby dog. I've never held a duckling before. Oh, oh it feels like a dog. Is it? Yeah, but the thing that she goes, from is her mouth. Yeah. yeah. I'm almost feeling violated. How do you feel that dog? Come here, Aris. Come he's, Aris. he's scratching himself on me. Boy, what a big boy. Along with echolocation, there are many ways in which blind people can participate in life. Brian has shown that wrapping a football in a plastic bag allows them to play the game. We can tell where the ball is and we could actually move toward it and kick it to the person. You can listen to it, click at it, and actually see where the ball is heading, you know. Go to the left, center, right. They are now gaining confidence and moving around with more ease. They are about to learn mental mapping. This is a major challenge. They do this at the University of Belize campus in Belopan, which is a large area. Brian's test is to have a starting point, the van, from which they walk out and then place an object anywhere they want on campus. And I gotta remember this now, where this, I put this. Okay. Yep. Find this bottle. They then retrace their steps back to the van. The challenge is going to be remembering and taking good markers along the way to discover and find your treasure. Donovan goes first and finds his deposit. They all help each other. We're close, Donovan. Yeah, we're right in front. We're right there. There's, the There's it! Hey. <laughs> first one to the car wins a prize. Juan leads them back to the van. Very good, Juan. Nice job, Juan. Now it's Ron's turn and he claps and clicks to locate his marker spot to guide him to his treasure. Brian teaches him to make a louder click. You need more pressure and more suction on your tongue. Oh yeah, now I can hear it bouncing off. I tend to want to go toward the fainter echoes. You want to listen to the more obvious echoes, the louder ones. Okay, find this bottle. All right, let's go find the car, and then it's Juan's turn. Let's go find your marker spot. Juan finds his marker spot, the University of Belize sign, and then eventually finds his bottle. Yes, sir. Yay! Good job. <laughs> You did a great yeah. job. Good boy. All right, thank you. Good job. You guys are awesome. As like learning how to click and getting used to your canes, and that could have to be with the type of character and the type of people you are on the inside. So give yourselves a round of applause Yay. for just being like, I appreciate your guys' willingness. And I loved it how you guys got outside and just started walking around and exploring. That's, that is excellent. How would you describe the sound? 
Hollow. Hollow. But it has an extra reverberation, huh? It makes a vibrating sound. Like a pinging sound, right? Yep. Yeah. Clap your hands again. Wow. So what do you think is up there? A roof. A big and tall roof. What type of shape of the roof do you think it is? I think it's a, a rectangle. That little pinging sound means the sound is getting trapped in a lot of... Dirt. A lot of turns. Maybe there's some lights. Maybe there's some nooks and crannies up there. Amazing. See these guys just, you know, have all the ability, the courage to do this. End of part one.